that. Uh, I think that is really good. And the reason I went to this towel at the end is because uh, Big John was a, a great influence on me. He was great friends with Coach Smith. Uh, in fact, he called me last year and left me a, a message. Didn't like what I was saying after the game and jumped all over me. Uh, but the funniest thing he's ever said to me is I told him one time, I said, big fella, I said, I'm going to start wearing a big old towel on my shoulder like you do. And he started laughing and he said a few words uh, that we won't repeat, but he basically told me, he said, if you wear a big old towel like mine, it'll be you like you wearing a big blanket, boy. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, honoring John Thompson is something that uh, uh, the only bad thing, it was hard to keep that thing on my shoulder. I kept putting it there and somebody kept taking it off or somehow it kept sliding off. But uh, uh, we're happy about the win, uh, having four guys in double figures and uh, two guys uh, close to that as well. Uh, was good. Uh, I think that uh, uh, trying to do a better job on Walker in the second half was huge for us. The first half, I said, I've never been outscored by one guy, but it looked like that he was going to do that. He's really a gifted player and made it tough for us, seven for eight, four or five from the three-point line in the first half. But uh, I thought we were better in the second half. The shooting percentage, we missed so many easy ones right around the basket. Uh, big guys didn't have a great day of finishing up there, but uh, I like the fact that uh, uh, Garrison and uh, uh, Mondo did some good things, but I really like that Dayron and Walker both came off the bench and had double figures for us as well. So Kurt Caleb Love, nine assists and two turnovers. And I think he had two turnovers in the first four minutes of the game or something like that. I don't know, one was a charge and one was a, a pass, but uh, uh, glad we got to play a game. Uh, it was a tough week. Uh, we've lost and now there's talking about other games being lost, but uh, uh, you guys may have heard the story. I'll make it official. When we knew we were not going to have Virginia Tech, uh, we reached out first to those people who were on our schedule originally, most of them in the state that we had to cancel early. Some of their protocols wasn't what we needed it to be, and some one of them was even in a pause themselves. Then we had discussions with two other schools, and that didn't work out, and uh, so – Clint put it out on tweet or twit, whatever it was. And uh, we got some responses there. And uh, uh, Northeastern, uh, they had one of the schools that reached out. And uh, Clint Gwaltney, our assistant AD in charge of basketball, called them. And uh, I thought it was a good thing for us. I didn't realize how good uh, Walton was. He reminds me of uh, uh, likes at uh, uh, Miami and that he's always been really difficult for us. But I hope that Billy thinks his team got something out of it, and, and we did. When I was in the Little League, if we had 15 games, I wanted to play 15. If one got rained out, I wanted to be rescheduled. When I was a high school coach, we had 20 regular season games. If one got snowed out, I wanted to be rescheduled. And so that's what we were trying to do is just to get some more games and then get some more home games. Today was only our seventh game at home, and somebody showed me a stat before the game today we had the lowest percentage of home games of anybody in the 353 teams in the division one. That's all the monologue I got. Jacob Turner, go ahead. Hey Roy, 25 of y'all's first 38 points tonight came from bench players. What kind of lift did you think that those guys gave you, particularly in that first half? Well, I think they've been playing better the last eight or 10 games. We challenged them because I think I'm right on this. Virginia's bench last year in two games outscored us 42 to 10. And so we made that a point before the Virginia game that uh, we needed to get more out of them scoring wise, but also the defense and rebounding and those kind of things. But I think also uh, Dayron plays a lot. Uh, Andrew plays a lot. Uh, Walker Kessler had two good games back to back now. I think that'll help him. And uh, so we need to keep going with our bench because I think at the end of the season, People just get more tired, and you got to have somebody that can come in and your level of play cannot go down. C.L. Brown. Roy, what did, what did you see as the major benefits of uh, making sure you had another home game as opposed to, you know, uh, just taking a game in the ACC if you had to go on the road or something like that and instead playing this non-conference game at home? Well, we needed to play a game at home. Period. We have six home games before today out of 19. And that's not, uh, it's not equitable. It's not fair. I've always tried to play a, a difficult non-conference schedule. And 
this year our ACC Big Ten fell on the road. Uh, guys like to play at home. I mean, it's that was a pretty easy one to answer. I, you're always, you know, again, guys, up until about the last week or so, uh, teams have won 70% of their home games. Somebody says the crowd's not there, so home court is not a factor. That's BS. You're used to shooting in your gym. Uh, you're used to sleeping in your bed. You're eating the meals that you always eat and not what somebody else prepared. Uh, again, I think it's uh, – I'm, I'm willing to – stop playing the ACC Big Ten Challenge. I'm willing to stop everything, play 20 game schedule and play the rest of our games at home. We play 14, 15 or 16 home games normally in our schedule. And some teams in our league play 19, 20, 21. And uh, uh, this thing, the whole thing that's going on right now, I feel a heck of a lot safer coming here and playing than I do getting on the plane, going somewhere else and playing. And again, we didn't try to find number 353 in the country. We found a team that had a higher RPI or net, whatever it is, and three teams in our league. So, yes, if we have to go on Twitter again, I'm going to try to find another home game. It's, it's uh, bottom line. Deanna King. Coach, Walker had a great game, but what did you guys do to limit him? He only had one field goal the last 33 minutes. Well, I think we tried to uh, uh, guard him better. Maybe he was just tired from scoring all those points and wore himself out from making so many baskets. But uh, I do think that we tried to double team him in the second half and he made good plays. He made good decisions, hit number 15. Uh, I think it was Stuckey that made three threes in the second half when we doubled him, but we got the ball out of his hands. And uh, so we did some things, but again, maybe he was just tired of making baskets. Adam Smith. Hey, Roy. Uh, I mean, Louisville couldn't play tonight uh, because of their COVID situation. What, BC's already off for next week for you guys. I mean, do you sort of leave out of here holding your breath for the rest of some of these games? I mean, what, what's, what are your thoughts on that? You know, Adam, I've been doing that for the last six weeks. And uh, just you're so hesitant and you're so uh, cautious with what you're doing yourself, but you're also afraid of what may happen to your team and somebody else's team. Now let's get it straight that one of the games that we lost was more our fault than anybody else's by far. You know, we felt like we had satisfied the protocols, but Jimmy's team didn't feel comfortable. That was the bottom line. Uh, but that one was our fault. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got to play the games that they put on our schedule. We was told we could play 27 games. That's what I'd like to play. Uh, we play 20 conference games and one ACC Big Ten. I'd like to play all of those. But if we don't, our kids like to play games. They get tired of listening to me and running sprints and things in practice all the time. Greg, go ahead. Greg Barnes. Roy, along those lines, how important was it to get this game scheduled and played just to try to maintain some type of rhythm for the players? I think, Greg, it was important, and I'll give you this example. When Clint walks in at the end of our practice and comes over and talks to me, my guys are over there dying. I mean, one day we talked, and we talked about the price of cheese in China, and I walked away from him, and all my guys are there staring at me and said, I said, guys, everything's okay. And one of them said, Coach, when we see you talking to somebody else, we think we're losing the game. And that's the mental health issue of 20 other mental health issues that we've got to worry about with our guys. They want to play a season. We all do, but we want to be as safe as we possibly can. Uh, but no, I don't mind telling anybody, I, uh, we're going to try to find, if people cannot come and play, all right? In BC, we were going there. Uh, but a few weeks back, uh, it looked like our schedule was going to be uh, uh, 10 home games, excuse me, 10 road games and seven home games. And since that time, we've lost two more home games. So come on now. We get, we're going to try to play people and don't have any idea what's going to come from it. But we'll wait and see. And Clint's earning his money this year. He's never earned it in his life, but he's earning it this year. Thanks. All right, uh, Ross, last one, and we'll get the players in here. Thank you. Hey, Coach, uh, you mentioned Sharp and Kessler's uh, high-quality play tonight. How have you seen them grow at this point in the season? And what are some things that you're really – Really still on them about um, and improving? Uh, making a simple play on the offensive end, uh, uh, scoring around the basket, defending the basket. I think I've always said to our big guys, 
that I thought we could be much better this year than we were last year is defending around the basket. And I think that's the biggest thing for us. Uh, we only had two blocks, but I think we do make it difficult, more difficult for guys to score around the basket. And uh, we have four big guys that uh, have been shooting a much higher percentage than our perimeter players. So, I mean, it wasn't a great shooting day for our big guys today, uh, but over the course of the season, they've shot a much higher percentage. So for us, it's the smartest thing to get them the shots. I think all four of our guys are, are big time college players who are going to be big time players and play basketball for a living. And it's not gonna come at the same speed for everybody. And it's uh, not as easy for everybody. Uh, but uh, I told, asked Sean May a question today and I knew the answer, which is the way most coaches do. I asked him how many threes he shot in his career for me, he said zero. We had his first team all ACC. He was the 13th player draft in the draft, led us to a national championship, played basketball for a living, and did okay. Uh, but uh, Walker Kessler, especially, I'll put some pressure on him. He just walked in the back of the room. He does have a chance to be one of those guys who can make a lot of shots and make shots from the outside. He hadn't shot it great so far this year, but I think he's going to be one of those guys that'll be able to do it. And I'll tell you the same thing I told him. He laughed too. I said, I know you're going to start making them, but I want it to me in my lifetime. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, we got Caleb up first.